What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another exciting hit scratching episode of Insane Disappearances. Uh, I got a story here about a uh, woman named, or a young woman named Maria Cash. This is a story that was um, uh, brought to my attention by one of my viewers, and he wanted me to look it up because it was a pretty strange case. Um, now, does it have those? Um, characteristics of the missing 411 cases in a way I think it does because she just dropped off the face of the earth after um, she got off of a, <coughs> got off of a truck and she was never seen again uh, most people think it's uh, maybe it's she was a part of some drug traffic some um, um, it's not not a drug trafficking ring but she was a part of like one of those um, you know sex you know rings uh, let me see Yeah, like a human trafficking ring. But um, I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. Uh, let me see. Now, Maria Cash was a 29-year-old. <clears throat> well, okay, here's the thing. I got to read it from here because um, I can't find it on the Internet. So I, I can find it on my phone, though. I looked everywhere for it, but they have all this other information about a person named Maria, but not this particular Maria. So I got to read it from my phone. Okay, now... Um, like I said, Maria Cash was a 29-year-old uh, fashion designer who left her Buenos Aires apartment in uh, on July 4th of 2011. She had planned a trip to Jujoy, uh or Jujuy. I'm not sure I don't know how to pronounce that, you know, but I think I got it right the first time. Anyway, um, now it's a tourist a touristic city near the Bolivian border. Uh, you know, she was going there to visit a friend named Juan Pablo Duman. Uh, now, this is a, a person that she met in 2008 uh, in a yoga class. And while she was in that yoga class, she was actually there to sell some of her designs. Now, she took a direct bus trip from Buenos Aires to San Salvador de la Jujoy uh, at 7.40 p.m. Uh, now, Duman said that he wasn't aware of her trip and that it took him by surprise. Now on July 5th, uh, she decided to get off the original bus in Rosario de la Frontera at noon. Apparently she didn't feel comfortable um, about the people that was on that bus with her. You know, she you know she didn't like them. I guess they were probably being kind of rude or obnoxious maybe, making a lot of noise, who knows. Uh, now she went back to uh, she went back to Santiago del Estero. According to Duman, he called her on the afternoon to say hi, and at that moment, he learns that she'll be visiting him. Now later that uh, later they exchanged several texts, and she told him uh, she was in Santiago del Estero without money uh, to continue her trip. Now, he sent her a prepaid bus ticket that she used uh, to arrive at Jujuy bus station. Now, on July 6th at 9 a.m., she called Dumont's sister, Paula, from a borrowed cell phone. Maria asked to be picked up at the bus station, but Paula and Juan Pablo were working at the time. Now, she ended up, uh, she, ended, she ended the phone call and never communicated, and she never communicated, yeah getting tongue tied here she never communicated with them again now uh, they text her during the afternoon saying that they wanted to pay for her to get a taxi to come where they were but she never replied now during her phone calls she seemed normal at the time uh, now a mechanic uh, workshop owner declared that he, uh, that she asked him for a phone charger uh, to charge her phone uh, to call her family, uh, she, you know she had trouble with the signal in those in that area, so he offered his own phone for her to call him. Now she called her parents and told them that she was uh, anguished and didn't have any money. Minutes later, her cell phone was turned off for good. Uh, it's believed that she left Jujoy between six and six thirty p.m. Now, at 11.30 p.m., she was seen on a CCTV camera in the... Hold on, guys. Yes, ma'am. You got your, all your understanding is pouring that over here. 
Yeah, I do. Okay, you turn your TV out too. It's Sunday lightning. Okay. Bye. Sorry about that, guys. You know, moms, you know how they worry about you. <clears throat> okay, now back to the story. Now, around 11.30 p.m., <clears throat> she was seen on a CCTV camera in the Route 34 near Salta, Salta City. Um, this is about, like, 71 miles from Jujoy. Uh, now she was using her backpack and there was no sign of her carry-on according to the I guess according to the video footage you know on the CCTV camera uh, now around it was now on July 7th at 1 15 a.m. <clears throat> she went to the San Bernardo Hospital in Salta and said she didn't feel well she refused to say her last name only giving them her first name and ID number uh, when it was her turn to see the doctor she was uh, she wasn't there anymore now my thing is why wouldn't you want to give a person your first and last name and just give them your ID card it's almost like she was in the military because you know they only give their name rank and serial number so uh, you know when it being when it when they've been captured by somebody or something like that but for her to not give her last name and only give her first name with her ID number Weird enough as it is, but you know. Okay, now um, at 9 a.m., a freeway employee found her backpack with the ID card still inside, but it wasn't opened until July 10th when the missing woman's face was on all the TV channels and newspapers. On July 8th, Maria sends her brother an email asking for some uh, relatives' phone numbers. Investigators believe she went. She spent. Uh, the night somewhere in Salta. Now later that day, she seen uh, she seen uh, in a Route 34 tow CCTV ca CCTV camera. Uh, now this is about 13 kilometers and 7.4 miles from Salta. She was hitchhiking and her behavior seemed erratic. Uh, you can s uh, well, it's talking about a a, a camera uh, well uh, footage of her looking erratic. So I would have to look at that footage to see. Uh, how she was looking at that point now security employees told her she couldn't stand there because it was too dangerous but she ignored the warnings <clears throat> now at 2 30 p.m a chevrolet pickup stopped and she climbed into the back of the truck some days after uh, the driver declared she uh, declared that he stopped because his wife uh because of his wife she felt sorry for the state in which Maria was in. She was sorry for the state in which Maria was in. Uh, now she was quiet during the 45 kilometer 27 miles. The trip lasted, and she never uh, looked at us. This is what they're saying. Uh, she was weird and, um, as doped. Uh, she only said she needed to go to the Tuckerman uh, border to meet with some with someone now see that's the one that's one thing I hear about a lot of these cases when people seem to disappear and they are um, like they're seen in some places or they uh, a, a person that they saw they'll mention that they're going to meet someone I mentioned this in a, in a previous case that I read about where this young this young man was saying that he was trying to get somewhere to meet someone and he was walking up the stairs and after that, that was the last time they saw him. It was almost as if he walked up the stairs, never actually hearing him go inside his apartment, never hearing him go inside his apartment, and then that, that was it. So, who knows what that could have been about. Now, okay, uh, now she left the pickup near General Guemis, uh, Gu Gu General Guemis town and traveled another 20 kilometers and 12 miles south um south in a, in a truck the truck driver said she was quiet and drank a lot of water she asked to leave the truck after a short drive at around 5 p.m uh now that was the last time someone saw her now uh this is one of the most uh resonant cases in the last decade or so here in, uh, you know there in argentina uh, the main theory is that she was a victim of human trafficking, but that didn't explain her erratic behavior. She uh, she didn't have a mental health problems uh, record. 
Now, her family kept the case open uh, to the media as much as they uh, as much as they could, and continued with private investigators based on the leads they received. Uh, they also received lots of threats too. Now, that right there, that could have some validity with the human trafficking part. So they probably didn't want them to be stirring up any uh, leads to that will lead back to them. So they threatened them and all this stuff. Now, shortly after that, her father, Federico, uh, died in a car crash. Excuse me, in 2014, he was following the lead, and his car was full of uh, flyers with Maria's information. Now, there's a 700,000 uh, ARS reward for information about her that would be actually 45,000 U.S. dollars uh, to to uh, to this day. Okay, now the fact that he died in a car crash while trying to, you know, follow a lead. Maybe they somehow found out that he got a lead that led back to them, so they wanted to take care of him. Probably they made sure that he didn't survive, so they probably somehow slammed into him or they caused him to slam into somebody else. Who knows? But um, yeah, that's a pretty crazy one right there. Um, now, the fact that she may be a part of some type of human trafficking is one idea, but still, she basically vanished off the face of the earth. And there hasn't really been any leads to lead up to that. Now, even if they did get some leads, the leads were halted because they were being threatened. And look at what happened to her father. He was killed in a car crash. So was it premeditated? Was it a premeditated car, car crash? Were they following him the whole time? Did they keep tabs on him? Knowing where he worked, where he slept, where he ate, where he was gone, where he was trying to get the information about his daughter? Who knows? That's the information that isn't present. So there you have it, folks. A story about Maria Cash, okay? And I got another one coming. This is about a little girl. Um, I got to read into her case um, a little bit more because I'm not sure exactly where she disappeared. I think it might have been in Argentina as well. But she like, she was about maybe five, maybe six years old at the time. And they think that her father may have had something to do with it. But anyway, in that case, I am going to turn this off because it's storming outside right now. And, I don't, you know, they always talk about lightning striking something that will make something blow out. And I don't want to be a victim of that. So I'm going to end this video with my usual way of doing it at the very end. Aloha, mahalo, and ahui ho. Peace out, guys. Have a good night.